So, uh, y'all, you're now tuned in to the 18th annual Happily Natural Day. We're here in uh, the garden here at uh, Canvas. Uh, give it thanks for the, the, the great collaboration with Scott Wayne and his team. I'm going to show y'all a little bit. And then, uh, yeah, we're here at Canvas. This is a co-working space here in uh, South Richmond. Uh, my, my team was uh, instrumental in helping to upgrade this garden into uh, a public space, a, a really nice chill resort oasis in the middle of the South Side. So uh, yeah, it's a perfect backdrop uh, for us to introduce uh, one of our, one of my esteemed elders, uh, uh, Baba Aris Latham. Uh, you know him as uh, Sunfire Foods, raw food, culinary arts, living food specialist, uh, expert pioneer. Um, very happy to have you on the platform uh, today. This is, uh, like we were saying, it's a long time coming. I'm, I'm glad we were able to make it so that it was a much more comfortable and easy uh, experience this time around. <laughs> so thank you so much for, uh, for being here with us today. And uh, yeah, I'm going to pass the mic to you so you can get the things going and show the people how to get some living food in their system. How about that? Hey, man. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You know, it's so great to be home, you know. And I mean, I was so inspired by this, this, this uplift, you know, that I'm like, I'm finally coming home nappy and happy, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Yes, sir. <laughs> happy. I mean, we've been trying to been trying to get to this festival for years. You know, uh, I think it's been about three or four different attempts. I mean, even once you, the festival was in Ghana, and I was like trying to get there. And the last attempt, you know, it's about 2013. I was on my way from New York, heading down to Atlanta you know, to get there eight o'clock that morning to get set up and rock it and slam, <laughs> you know. <Wow>. <laughs> we, got, we, got, we got hit by a truck and wow. ended up going across the medium park in front of two trees. <laughs> wow. You know, my, my, my partner who was driving had to be airlifted to the trauma center. The car almost got caught on fire. I barely wow. got I mean, it was some serious drama. But anyway. Yes. I'm here. I'm here. Wow, I'm so thankful for you, brother. Yes, yeah, safe, alive, and direct from the Grand Cayman. Nice. The Cayman home, you know, right here in, in, in the Caribbean, in our beautiful backyard. Look, man, I've been here on the COVID vacation, you know, so... <laughs> So that's been it's been a great place to uh, to ride it out, you know, a good window to the world here. I yes, think sir. there was one fatality here, but anyway, hey, you know, forward to home right now. Thank you, family. Thanks for you know this happy natural day festival that I get to shine with you together. And I had to reach way deep into the vault. <laughs> into the sun-fired vault, into the year, the Harlem years, nice. 1979, when we uh, basically launched Sunfired Foods in Harlem, New York, you know, and back in those days, you know, with the jewels of a time, we had a place we call the House of Life, or better, better known as Per Ankh, you know, in, in our ancient comedic language, and uh, and this was the feature, the Ankh cake. <laughs> the Ankh cake. <laughs> you know, because when you know we had when we opened up the House of Life, we had Dr. John Henry Clark and my brother Heru out of New York. You know, that's been Ankhing everybody for years. You know, he Ankh uh, Dr. John Henry Clark at the opening of the House of Life. And of course, every time he anked someone during those times, I made the ankh cake. We had the sun-fired ankh cake. So we reached into the bar to make this ankh cake for the family today in honor of the natural festival for the work that my brother and 
sisters and the whole community has been doing to keep it real, to keep it live, to keep it natural and create the space for us to be able to totally self-express, you know, without apologies. So it's great to be home and up to the family virtually. This is my gift, you know, to our entire community, the gift of life that lasts forever and ever, and we can keep giving and giving, giving of it because, you know, aunts be to us, <laughs> you know. <laughs> yes, sir. All right. Let's go. Okay. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna mute myself now. Okay, great. Well, thank you. So, you know, wow. <laughs> It's been a good now, as you know, you know, basically 40 years plus of flowing with the community and sharing the sun-fired vibration, you know, as an institution for us. And sun-fired is a word that I coined to really bring positive light into our life, especially with the food that we're consuming. Many call it raw food, but we call it raw food, you know, sun food. This is the food of life. This is the food that gives you back life and loves you back. It actually loves you back, you know, so it's not a cuisine that's going to beat you up, that's going to mistreat you, that's going to leave you ill. So it brings you to a level where you get to really realize and live the life you were born to love because there is no way you're going to get sick. Leave it up to the sun. You know, ra, you know in, 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 in the, uh, the tradition of Imhotep, the original first doctor of food, you know, and all of the people in our, you know, lineage that kept telling us, look, just eat, be merry, for tomorrow you may die. Your food to do this you know, and it should not kill you after you get our lineage giving you life. You kept telling us life, you know, and this is why traditionally we did not go to a hospital when we got out of sort. We went to the house of life, <laughs> and the house of life is where we go to really just get back into the womb. You know, we go to fast, we go to meditate, we go to open up, release, and allow the body to do what it does best. Heal thyself, okay? Heal thyself. So whether you want to call it a mystery system or whatever you want to call it, we know what to do. The body knows what to do. We just have to treat it accordingly, allow it, let it be. Stop mistreating it, stop abusing it, stop killing it, you know, and let it be who it is, what it can do, because it is totally self-healing. So there's no reason why you should be sick. And if you should ever get sick, just eat, because thy food shall be thy medicine and thy medicine shall be thy food. But look, we need to wake up today and we need to come straight home because there's a lot of spookiness and unreality that's been going on in our community for just too long. You know, yeah, we hear, we glorify the saying, you know, uh, the herb is for the healing of the nation. And everybody is into this green culture now, green this, green smoothie, green everything. Please, you know, now we come with this plant medicine culture. If the herb is for the healing of the nation, how long does the nation intend to be sick? How long do you need to keep smoking the herb? Okay? So if that herb is supposed to heal you, there is a point where you should stop smoking it because you have been healed. And the only time you need herbs, if it's for healing, is when you're sick. And if, and if you're still sick and you're still smoking that herb 20, 30, 40 years, or you just got started and you're constantly hitting it, and you still ain't, ain't well, something is wrong with that statement. So let's wake up, let's come home. 
and not just the herb, but that's just basically the symbolism of all the things that we've been doing to ourselves, you know, dealing with these environmental hazards, these cultural accidents, these societal, you know, pinholes that we have been pushed into eating things or consuming things that are foodless foods. Please, your food should bring you life, should bring you merriment, should always keep you healthy. Myself, 73, today, 73, okay, not sick, haven't been sick for over 50 years since I stopped eating animals, okay? No animal foods, just strictly plant foods. And my inspiration, my foundation, my roots came from the hood. We're talking Bed-Stuy, Brooklyn, New York, the late 60s, the time of the revolution, reading one book <laughs> that triggered, off, triggered a whole lot, a book by the title of From Plan to Planet. If you never heard about it, look it up because, you know, it's still around. Written by a brother, Hakeem Madhabuti, known back then as Don L. Lee. And reading that book in 1968 in the hood, working at the Uhuru Sasa Co-op, a Freedom Now, you know, community co-op that's based on, you know, the whole culture of vegetarianism. And, and when I get to the place in the book that it says, you know, be conscious of eating white foods. They're all mutants, white sugar, white flour, white salt, you name it, <laughs> okay? And it rung a bell because the whole deal of the book was to get us to get on and move, move up from plan to planet, like stop talking about the revolution and get busy with the revolution. And back then, and you know our brother Gil Scott Heron, bless his soul. You know, it was the revolution would not be televised. So don't try to be famous. Just get busy, deal with yourself. So that's what it's been all about. When we got into this back then, you know, based on the Black Power Movement, the uh, action of self-defense and looking at food as a weapon that we need to discard, okay, and stop killing ourselves with our food. And now we're talking again, 50 years plus of only consuming plant foods, you know. So I have moved from plant to planet, but the journey was through the plant. So we're talking from plan to plant to planetary evolution, get back down to earth because our connection with the universe is absolutely through the plants because this is our spirit, this is our soul before somebody boxed it up and start calling it a religion. It's about spirituality and our spirituality is expressed through nature. This is it, living entities, living vibration. Of course, you know, animals as well included, but not for us to slaughter them because we got dominion over, over all of the, the beasts and the fowls of the earth. You know, no. Why do you want to eat a beast? Why do you want to eat a fowl? Or even call him a neighbor or a friend in the way that you want to bring them in, in your home, sleep with them in the bed and kiss up and all of these kinds of things. Look, please, let's deal with the spiritual essence of who we are, okay? So you want to come forward. Now first, protect the animal that you live in. OK, so for us, that's what it was about then in the 60s, you know, from from bald head to, to, to Afro to nappy. OK, it was about protecting this bald head that I slept in back then, this Afro head that I slept in, this nappy head that I'm sleeping in today. And the revolution continues. A luta continua. Here we are still on the front line. Food is definitely a channel that we have to reckon with. You don't have a choice. You have to eat. Yeah, the, yeah, breatharian and all these things that you think you're going to achieve, but you're still eating before you get there, before you get to the breath. That's all fine and good and everything like that. 
you know, you got your herbs there, the herbs for the healing of the nation, but yeah, what are you going to eat? You still going to eat. You got this, you got that. Why are you sick? And fine, you, you should not be sick at all. So let's start from basic 101, the original, natural, and best food for human consumption. And also, let's fast forward the, the, the argument, because it does not begin with vegetarianism at all. It begins with the advent of fire. The herbs are for the healing of the nation, but fire kills the nation. It kills the food. It destroys the life that you're looking to get out of that food. It destroys the macronutrients. You know, the water, of course, in the food is zapped. So you got to go boil it in some other water, stuff that ain't even water fit for human consumption, because our water also needs to come through trees, needs to come through plants. Of course, yeah, watermelon straight from the melon spring, okay? Coconut water straight from the coconut spring. So here we are today, here, right now. And the passion, the joy of sharing with you on this level is a special calling for me, okay? Ah, our Aunt Cake. This cake, the way we crafted this cake, uh, the base of it is, is nuts, almonds, walnuts. So take, take notes now, now. You know, I know you're going to hit me up for recipes, but this is the recipe in motion right now. This is what I'm sharing with you. The recipe for the uh, cake, the cake of life. Okay. So uh, just, just grab you a pile of almonds, a pile of walnuts, soak them overnight for 12 hours. And, you know, we put something in there that's going to hold it together. You know, that's going to, I mean, it makes it capable. <laughs> okay, so I know you've heard of oats, you've heard of rolled oats, steel cuts oats, but have you heard of oat groats? It's the seed of the, 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 that, that produces that cereal grass. So ideally, you want to take your seeds, your grains, you want to soak them, uh, germinate them, sprout them, and let them break down from complex carbohydrate to simple carbohydrate. So we soak, you just need like a quarter pound of the oat groats, soak it for 12 hours, it germinates, then you're gonna sprout it for a couple of days. So here the sugar, the, the complex, you know, starches are being broken down into simple carbohydrate. So it's quite a far call from oatmeal, <laughs> okay? Oat cereals and things of this nature. You know, those things, they're all cooked and you know, they're, they're not gonna break down, they're not going to, pre-digest, they're not going to sprout, soak, germinate to the point where your body can handle it. So really they're foodless foods. So I call them foods for foods, <laughs> okay? So of course now we, we got some dates in there. So we're talking, you know, really for the volume that we just shared of the other ingredients with you, you just need a cup of dates, you know, cups, dates are pure sugar, pretty much. 100% sugar. You want to sweeten something that does not require a liquid sweetener, then dates are your best shot. So one cup of dates. So we break these ingredients down in a food processor. You grind the walnuts by themselves, you grind the almonds by themselves, you grind the oats by itself, and then we add on top of this now the, the, the spices that we're grinding into these nuts and the grain, we're talking uh, uh, fennel, anise, cloves, nutmeg, cinnamon, you know, the things that you put in your apple pie spice or your pumpkin pie spice, or some people may even call them five spice, but you come up with your blend. You know, but go 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 into it and really find what harmony because spices also are healing just like herbs. These are medicine. Ginger, you know, it's a spice. You know, you know the difference between herbs and spice. Herbs are leaves, and spices everything else. Bark, fruits, berries, roots, anything else would be a spice, but they all are healing. These are all foods that are for the healing of the nation. So when we put these foods or these ingredients into our mix-up, 
and bring it to a certain level. And by the way, we did put vanilla in there as well. Vanilla is a bean, so it's a spice. You know, you can get the whole vanilla bean, slice it and scrape out the seeds, that black, black gold, <laughs> you know, and the flavor. So anyway, th this is the flavor factor in our aunt cake right here. And then those are grind done, you know, with the nuts, the seeds, the grain, and then also now the dates, we're gonna grind those separately. We wanna make a date paste. So you put the dates in the food processor by itself and blend it down with some, some moisture, some liquid. You could use any liquid, but make sure it's living. If you're gonna use water, coconut water, living water for living people. Otherwise, use strawberry water. Just get whole strawberries and blend them with the dates. So you, because you should never eat dried fruits just the way they are. That's, they have to be rehydrated. They're going coming into a body that is 70% moisture. So you don't want to put them in dry because they're going to constipate you because they're going to dehydrate you. So these are the kinds of things, the science that we share with you. So it's not just the recipes and the look, you know, the art. You know, it's the complete art and science of plant foods. This is what sun-fired foods is all about. So when you eat this food, you're going to really just release naturally. You're not going to be gassed up. So for example, the combination I just gave you of breaking down the protein, you know, in the nuts and the complex carbohydrate in the, in, in the oat, the grain, you know, you have soaked them you sprouted the grain, you'll bring them to a point where they're pretty much pre-digested. And then also now we're adding dates to it, which is a sugar, which you look at all food combination chart, that's a no-no. Don't combine sugar with starch or sugar with protein. But the way we do it, we broke the, the sugar down into a liquid rather than a concentrate form, but also we layered in between the cinnamon, the nutmeg, the cloves, you know, these heavy, rich spices that keep a wedge between the sugar and the starch and the protein so that the sugar can move on and there will be easy digestion so you won't be cast up. So this is what the art and science of sun fired foods is all about. This is why I have been honored you know, to receive a, a, a PhD for having developed sun fired foods. You know, so I'm a doctor of philosophy, <laughs> of the science and art of sun-fired foods. And of course, I've been acclaimed by the Oxford Encyclopedia of Food and Drink as the father of gourmet raw food, ethical <laughs> gourmet raw food cuisine, pretty much in the world. You know, so it's been an honor, it's been a blessing because I've done this with your support, with our community. This is where we were birthed in, in bed -Stuy, in Harlem. And of course, you know, I was born in Panama personally, but that was an accident, you know, because you know how we are, you know, we Fulani, Fulani. And we've been journeying from Ethiopia for centuries. You know, we, we went into Kamet, we went into to Mali, we went into Spain, we, we were the 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 the, the, uh, the Moors, and we've come through the Caribbean. We even built a damn canal for those people in Panama. And as disgraceful as they are, I can't even call it home today, you know, because my grandfather, one of the diggers, dug that canal with pick and shovel. The way we there today, we don't even own a push cart. As a, as a group of people that labored to bring this kind of work. But hey, we have built many civilizations, we have built many, many monuments around the world and we keep building and that's why we have built some fired foods for you. And we built it in a way with the understanding, you know, that we're gonna over <laughs> on top of everything, especially where we are today at this junction, moving into this new civilization. And yes, we are part of the architectural team to build this new civilization that's unfolding right here, right now in this 2020 gap. And 2021, here we come. So if you ain't about health, wellness, deep spirituality, hey, yeah, you're gonna be sick, you're gonna suffer, and they're gonna call you one of the vulnerable 
parts of the population, but that's your choice. You, ready? you can step up right now, fire up your life, get in tune with the sun, you know, live with the sun. We'll live in harmony with the rhythms of the sun and the rest of the universe because we are heavenly bodies out here. We're just not dangling out here like some mannequin, some robot, you know, some clown. We are deep, profound people that is ready, been ready, but now in building this new civilization, we're building this one for us, okay? And all of those who are offspring, since we are the original people of this planet. So we're not gonna forsake and ignore some of the deviates that we have created. They're still our children, but we gotta bring them back home. We gotta nurse them, we gotta nourish them, we gotta detox them. <laughs> so bring, bring your butt over here, little one. Drink some coconut water and wash your heart out. This is what grandma used to tell us. And this is what we, as the grandparents of the earth, need to tell our offsprings that's been gone astray. Especially those of those that are still in our community and talking about how our lives matter to them also. Stand up more than words. Live it yourself. Take ownership of your life, of your energy. Stop retoxing. Just detox one more time for the last time so you don't have to detox anymore because you're not going to be retoxing again. Come on home to food, fresh food, living food. You know, I'm under my coconut water. This is me, the only water that I consume, fresh living water from the plant, from the source. So give me a moment. Excuse me while I sip my water. <laughs> Yeah, thank you, family, for lighting the fire. So here in our ark cake, our cake of life, of course, you see we have it on a bed of parsley. This is our grass that this life is just laying on, relaxing, chilling. And besides the ingredients that we have told mentioned that is inside the ark, inside the cake, we have this spread of coconut on top, that white. Yeah, it's coconut, but it's not frosting. It, it, this is hot coconut. We're not living in frost zone. Coconut don't grow in, in the frost, okay? So this is coconut cream made with fresh coconut jelly from the young tender meat that came. So we just blend it down smoothly and just glazed it right on top of here. So this is why we got this white light of an ankh, you know, to present and share with you. We have here these little, look at these, look at these things here. You know what these are? <laughs> look, no, they, 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 they ain't no, uh, you know, Christmas tree decoration. We don't play crafts, price mass, okay? <laughs> these are currants. This is a fruit. This is all food. This is what you're going to eat. These are currents, the energy in these currents, the vibration in these currents, they balance the sugar in the dates. Because, you know, I mean, you look at them, they look like, wow, they're like some sugar bombs. The sugar bomb is inside the, 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 the cake. It's the cake. This is what balances. This is what brings harmony and balance. As it is above, so it is below. As, as, as alkaline as you want to get, you need to have some acidity to balance you. So you don't want your PhD, your, your pH at, you know, nine alkaline. You know, I guess I, I gotta, they got you buying this little robotic machine to make alkalinize your water to bring it the pH up to nine. You want a 7.6 pH. That's what coconut water is, you know. And then you drop something that's a little too sweet in there that takes, takes it a little too high, then you balance it back down. But these are alkaline still because the sugar produces acid, but this acid tasting, these sour, fresh, <laughs> you know, yeah, these fresh currants, they're alkaline. They're like lemons. You eat that lemon, you get that big acid burst in your mouth initially, but once it digests, once it mixes with your saliva, it becomes alkaline. It secretes alkalinity. So this is what we're sharing with you. This is what the life is all about. And here, we got this, this, this bowl of gold here. And you know the ankh 
this part here of the ark, this round, you know, head of the ark here is the head of the family. This is our mother. This represents the female energy, you know, that really guards our life, that births our life. So these are us. These are the little gold nuggets coming out. We are, you know, but here is, is, is the offsprings. These two sides of the ark right here. These are the children. And of course, this is the phallic. This is the male energy, the same as is represented in the coconut tree, that phallic, that male energy, that obelisk. And but look at the female in that coconut tree, a man, masculine energy, that coconut tree, a hundred feet tall into the earth, into the air, and yes, a hundred feet tall, deep into the earth as well. As it is above, so it is below. Same as the pyramid energy that we have built all over this planet, okay? And that male energy, that coconut tree, that obelisk, that, that phallic is buried in the bosom of the earth, of mother earth. And the sun is pulling the water of life from the stream of life, from the sea, and pack, bringing it up into that coconut through the tree distilling it, turning those inorganic minerals into an organic form and putting us in a position now where we're going to drink from the breast of the earth. Because these coconuts, these little green coconuts coming off of a coconut tree, that masculine energy that you may see a coconut tree may be bearing like 300 coconuts or better yet, 300 breasts. <laughs> that man that did all that work to conquer, you know, the, 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 the challenge, the adversity, and bringing in the deep Pachamama relationship between the male and the female, the earth and the tree, you know, to package these nuts, these fruits with water, spring water, alkaline water, the water of life, coconut water, for us. So this is the synergy, this is the harmony, and we need to come back home to self, we need to come back home to reality, come back home to the tropics, come back to where coconuts grow, and let's live the life that we were really born to love and enjoy to the fullest. Be fruitful and multiply. So the ankh, as it, now we have these little black seeds on here. What are these black seeds? They are exactly what they're called. These are black seeds. Look them up and look at the power, the energy in these little black seeds, as small and fine as they are, and as black as they are. The beauty, the power, the strength is infinite. So look at the healing values of black seed. So this is what brings it all together. You know, the red, the gold, the green, the black, the white all of that harmonious uh, conversion that we have right here, that's gonna <sighs> fill us back up with life. Because the life that we crave, the life that we deserve, the life that we need is sun life. So this is why we consume sun fire foods, foods that are cooked by the sun. This is what sun fire is all about. Foods that are actually cooked by the sun and the growing period is the cooking process. So the time it took for this tree to blossom and you got a full ready to eat fruit, whether it be a black juicy cherry, that's the sweeter the berry, the blacker the berry, the sweeter the juice and all of this stuff, it's real. Or the same thing with the coconut, with that clear light, all filtered pure water. So sunshine. We need to eat the sun, especially for those of us who are living where sun don't shine that much, you need to eat it, yes. And then oxygen, let's get our fair share of oxygen every day. So please, you know, if you're living in a place where you have to be cooped up in air, under air condition or heat, you're living on a collision course with, with life. And then after those two main ingredients, then we need to look after our water. And you see what has happened to water on our planet today. It's been hijacked, it's been corrupted and perverted. And rather than being, you know, a, a birthright to have clean water, now it's an expense. 
but that's the water you don't want anyway. So get the real water from the trees, from the plants, and start to use an imitation plant machine to filter the water, ionize it, alkalinize it, and all these types of things. Of course, you're living on that collision course with Mother Nature, so you have to, you know, <laughs> make yourself a, a useful of this technology that's out there to you. But life is life, life is real, life is great, life is sweet, life is wonderful, full of wonders. So sunfired.com is where you're going to find me, okay? Is where you're gonna find all of these creations that we're sharing with you. That's S-U-N-F-I-R-E-D, sunfired.com. You can connect with me directly, write it to me, through sunfired at sunfired.com. Take a look at that website and what it is today, it's not what it's going to be tomorrow because we're relaunching that website by the 1st of September, you know, the couple of days, we're gonna relaunch that website. You're gonna be able to come to sunfired.com and study with me. We're gonna have online classes at sunfired.com. You're gonna get certification courses as well, we're going to have a television station. We're going to have a video archive vault where you can go and find the original Ankh cake recipe that we did in 1979. So all of these things, fortunately, we captured many of them on videos. So yes, the revolution is being televised right now. You know, and this is why we're bringing it to you in this form. We're bringing to you everything. In, in, in an updated manner because, hey, we've been spanning a good three to four generations already. So we got to make sure that, 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 that the fresh kids on the block get the roots of how they got to be where they are on the block today, okay? And we want to strengthen that block. We want to strengthen them. We want to give them more life, more love, more energy, and more wisdom, you know, so that, you know, wow. As the next generations come forward, we don't have to start from you know square one uh, and constantly keep doing it that kind of way, you know. So you know, thank you, family. Thanks for coming, inviting me, having me here to share. And look, I wish I had you know maybe another fifty nine hours because it really needs about six hours for me to share with you on this the level that I'm really, you know, I'm just hungry to just let it out and put it in your, in your ears, in your psyche, you know, in your mind, you know, in your spirit to really take it all to the level where, you know, we can unlock the sleeping giant within you so that you yourself can create not only these recipes, but recipes that I could have never even imagined that were possible to come forward. And for those of you who are in a position that you're gonna be ready to fly as the skies start to reopen, meet me in Costa Rica. That's gonna be my first stop, springing out of here from the Cayman Islands. Uh, join me in Costa Rica, uh, the 8th through the 15th of October. Just go to sunfire.com. The info is gonna be posted on there. And, uh, you'll see where you can come and get certified with the sun-fired vibration and get to live the life and get your coconuts fresh every day. I would even teach you how to climb the coconut tree. You know, so <laughs> I'll teach you how to do coconut yoga, yoga for a cause. If you want to hide it. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll have a coconut climbing tree workshop and I'm going to lead that one as well. Because I want to show you that if at 73, I can still climb a coconut tree, shame on you. You can do all these yoga postures and contortions and all of these things, but you can't climb a coconut tree. Wait a minute. You need to do a coconut yoga class one-on-one. Yes. And I'm here to share with you. So thank you, family. Bless up life. <laughs> you know, and uh, hey, my brother. Yes. Thanks for Oh, man. <laughs> man, I think before can can we do some Q? Can we do some back and forth? Some some question uh, dialogue? Some just you know conversation a little bit? Oh yeah, sure, most definitely. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So uh, 
you know, earlier in your talk, man, you talked about, you know what I mean, uh, uh, coming up in, in Brooklyn, you know what I mean, in the 60s and 70s. And, you know, I, I'm curious as to what parallels you see from then to now, you know what I mean, in terms of like the uprising and just like, I guess, the consciousness of what have you amongst the, amongst the people, you know what I mean, in, in terms of uh, just, you know, the movement, quote unquote, you know what I mean, especially like with just being uh black centered or African centered or what have you, like what parallels do you see in terms of that from then to now? Well, you know, it's, it's very interesting. The parallels are quite obvious, you know, and especially for someone like me, you know, because when I got to the U.S. at the age of 17 in 1964, this was on the heels of an uprising that we had in Panama. Mm. In 1960, mm. 1961, 62, 63, there was a big movement by the students there because, you know, the U.S. had leased the land from Panama to build the canal and all these kinds of things. And they brought in my grandparents as workers to build this canal from mm. the English-speaking Caribbean islands, and then they brought, it, brought in this engineering force from the U.S., these white workers, right. you know, and we're here in a foreign country, and uh, they got the Jim Crow going on, mm. right there. Wow. So, you know, my grandfather's paid in silver, you know, John McCain, who was born there in Panama, right there where I was born, mm. he's an American, Right. And I'm a Panamanian, and we born right up the street from each other in right. the Republic of Panama. Right. But right. you know, but also, but he his people were paid in gold coins. Wow. So when we went to the commissary, there's one door that said gold and one door that sells silver. Wow. So we had to go through the silver door. It wasn't white, black, or colored Negroes and this or that over there. Mm -hmm. So the Jim Crow, the apartheid was there. So what happened in 1963, there's a student uprising that, that the students went, and this is not just African, um, you know, students, African, you know, uh, Caribbean descendants, mm -hmm. you know, we're talking others as well. Right, 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 right. Went to the and put the Panamanian flag next to the American flag at the school. Because you know the school was all white kids from right. the U.S. Even right. us, the black kids that were born there, we could go to school in the U.S. Canal Zone because we were Panamanians. Mm. We were not Americans. But anyway, we took the flag down. We, we put our flag up. Well, Panama flag, not ours. Right, not our, right? Not what right. right. I know what you mean, though. So the deal was that the white kids took the Panamanian flag down. Mm. So the students got up in arms, and we went and, you know, responded accordingly. So me, myself, you know, uh, in my neighborhood, you know, I'm on the front line, Molotov cocktails. You know, we go in at the US YMCA and mm -hmm. those places. And mm -hmm. we hit the canal zone. And what happened? You know, a few months later, when they went into the negotiation of the, the Panama Canal Treaty, the, Amer the Yankees <laughs> told them, them black folks y'all brought from the West Indies, you got to get them out of here because they're the only ones working on the canal. Right, right. We right. the canal back. We want our people working there. So right. what happened? We got visas to New York. <laughs> you know? <laughs> we got, and we thought, we were, oh, man, we're going to the States. We got visa to New York. Right. 1964, by the time I get to New York, and here I'm in bed -Stuy. I'm focused, I'm seeing a whole nother thing. Yeah, right. Malcolm X down the corner over there. Mm -hmm. you know? And the big star, oh man, this is what I left back there. It's the same thing. <laughs> right? Wow. Campus, you know, in, in that time in the 60s and the whole riots after Martin Luther King died or got killed and all of that. See what happened to the Black Panthers and 
all of these things coming through and see what's go going on in the neighborhood and everything. And this is what even, you know, our revolution in the way of food and being revolutionaries and not trying to kill ourselves with the weapon of food, this is where the kind, so what I'm seeing today, yes, it's parallel, it's the same thing. It is the same thing because the, well, number one, the awareness around food is very profound today, yeah. <laughs> you know, and yeah. many people are calling me every day like, hey, brother, what, I, I need your help, this, that, and not only that, but what's going on on the front line mm -hmm. with people taking ownership challenging the system the way we did in the 60s. Mm -hmm. Where as students, we sat in the, 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 the president's office of the university, mm -hmm. you know, in New York, mm -hmm. in other places in the US, took mm -hmm. it over with, yeah, with guns and rifles. You see the picture of the Black Panther, yeah. you know, with a gun, yeah. right. and you see this picture of students, you know, and all this stuff, but not just the Black students, the white students were there as well. The hippies right. were there as well, the, the so-called underground, you know, folks were there. So it's pretty much the same thing. And then also what we were doing back then and getting in and becoming uh, vegetarians, mm. we see the same thing happening with the new generations now that are on the college campus, but they're not just vegetarians. Mm -hmm. They are living foods now. A lot of them are demanding living food raw. And some, most of them even going like they're fruitarians. Mm, mm, they were stopping on just eating plant food, and a lot of them they ain't even buying into this whole thing about plant-based food because right. they know that that's another joke. That's right. another. That's a market. That's another marketing. Uh, Huge marketing. Technique. Huge marketing. Because they're gonna end up. You know, I mean, we were dealing with sloppy Joe back then, and now they're dealing with, with slutty burgers and stuff <laughs> like that. You know, come on now. But now. The new generation that is on the front line today, they have seen what we have done, you know, and they are, are taking it to other levels. Not only what we have done in our generation, but generations before us, generations since then, between us and them, and now they are not taking it. Mm -hmm. So yeah, parallels are very similar, but we're not going to go and drag down into all of the low energy and put that out there. We see it in the headlines all over the place. Right, 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 right. By others as well. So, you know, we got other tactics that we don't even need to even be broadcasting even yeah, right for now. Sure. For sure. For sure. With the food on a righteous level, that takes care of a lot of headache. And I mean, literal headache. So we yeah. can really focus. On, yep. on, on advancement rather than dealing with, with scratching our head because it, it, we got a headache. We, we just saw the brother, the brother uh, Chadwick Bozeman, man. He passed away because he had colon cancer. You know what I mean? And, um, you know, the brother from Black Panther. And so we, so, you know, for me, it's like, I think about all of the, the, the numbers of us, of, of, of people of color, or black people specifically who who run up on these diet related illnesses you know what i mean it's like you said the food is a weapon it's a weapon being used against us and i think you know one of the challenges i have is like helping people understand that there's a certain politic to death right where you know when somebody get murdered by the police it's a shocking you know, it, it, it's a riveting moment, right? Like it catches you like, ah, oh, outrage, right? But at the same time, you know, when we die from like diabetes, you know what I mean? And the cancers and the, and the, and the high blood pressures and all that stuff, you know, it's a slow death that happens in our community, right? And it's hard for me to, it's hard, it's sometimes I think it's hard for people to understand the magnitude and under which, you know, we are under the gun when it comes to the food and the lack of healthy food that we have that we're putting in our bodies, you know what I mean? Um, but I, I wanna applaud you for being, you know, the 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 trainer the 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 the, the pioneer the, the somebody that's really like yo listen 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 this food piece is critical you know what i mean because if we ain't like you said clear-headed you know 
it ain't even about clear headed. It's like, do you can you actually go out and do work? I farm, you know what I mean? I grow food uh, on the regular. And, you know, seeing people out there and it's like, you know, I be working with uh, folks and sometimes folks be like, <sighs> and you know what I mean? They, it's, it's like they're winded. Yeah, you know, you know, just coming back to the to, 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 to the the question as you posed it initially, and bringing up the brother here from the black this Black Panther movie, you know, first of all, I tuned out since somewhere in the eighties. The last time, the last movie I saw was Spike Lee do the right thing. Hey, that's one of my favorite movies, though. <laughs> <laughs> That's one of my favorite movies, though. That <laughs> well, 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 that's why after I saw that movie, I decided that I need to do the right thing. And the right thing for me to do is stop going to the movies and, and, and live right now in the here and now and do my stuff on the highest level possible. Mm -hmm. Because what I've seen that has been happening with the movies, with entertainment, with a lot of these types of things, we get we get dished out a hero and somewhere along the way something tragic happens to this hero die from cancer whether it's bob marley or my brother that just died yesterday yeah there's something interesting about these types of pictures because even though you know i mean that whole movie black panther i mean what's the implication of that and the original Black Panthers who picked up guns and rifles on the street to defend our community. And now you're getting this, this Marvel movie with right. this, and then it's placed in Africa and then the whole marketing and the whole thing of it being premiered all over the world and Black folks are corralled into these things and these people are making all this money off of this stuff. But right. now you come and see that the hero of the movie that we glorified so much. Now the young man dies of cancer. And he's supposed to have been having this cancer for four years now. Wait Crazy. a minute. That's way heavy, right? Wait a minute. That's way heavy. You know, and, and all that money that he made? Yeah. And why does he even have to get as, as, as brilliant, you know, as he is in acting and all of this stuff? Why have you, why, why did you even get cancer? Or if you had it, how did you get it? Where does this play in? Right. And, and why are you on a movie set filming the Black Panther and you have cancer and you're not dealing with yourself? What are you trying to do? Make a lot of money, become more famous or what? And what about yourself and your life and your cancer? Mm. You know, you didn't go look, look up for Dr. Sabi or somebody at least right. to see what's going on and you so brilliant. That's what really, really drops a heavy pain on me. Mm. When I see even our, our big heroes, Dr. John Henry Clark, Dr. Ben Yochanan, you yeah. know, that gave us all this wisdom, all this information. But look, let's look at, let's look at Dick Gregory. Let, let's look at the ones who broke the mold. Right, yeah. And what Dick sure. Gregory did, being right. a, a comedian, 300 pounds, and just entertaining people, telling, slapping jokes and stuff like that. And, mm -hmm. and Dr. Alvina Fulton out of Chicago gets a hold of him mm -hmm. and, and put him on a fruitarian diet, clean him out, put him on a fast, drop him down to 98 pounds. And what mm -hmm. happened? What did that man contribute to me and many of us for the rest of his life? Yes. Okay? So yes, that's major. Recreation and, and, and putting it to us in this kind of way and now to see that our hero dies of cancer? Right. Come on now. And, and today, on a day like today, the day like yesterday, and uh, that, that, you know, where all the stuff is going on in the world and we're getting killed by these other forces, mm -hmm. why are we getting killed by disease right. that, that is manageable through food? Right. And why, do, why don't we take the time to really deal with these things? Mm -hmm. You know, they're trying to become this, this, this hero. Mm -hmm. Fine, no issue with Denzel Washington, Spike Lee, with none of my brothers and sisters who have been doing these things and bringing certain things to us in a certain light. But we need to we need to look at the other side of the cards. We got it, and right? And let's talk about health. Let's talk about health in all of this. 
you know, and where do we go forward from here? What lesson are we going to learn from this, this young man sacrificing his life to, to bring us this great, you know, uh, Wakanda business and, and, and forgot his life? that he would go out like this. You know, that's a that's a deep, I appreciate you sharing that because I, you know, I sat down and I thought about it. The thing that struck me the most is like, you know, here's his brother, he's doing all his work and he's sick, you know what I mean? And it's like, you can't save nobody unless you save yourself first. So it's like, you gotta put on your oxygen mask. So the big part about it that, like you said, is like, you know, we need to take a moment, man, and think about our own, our, our personal, you know, wellness, like what's going on in our body. You know what I mean? I, I, you know, all of us have, you know, work to do in that regard. But the reality is, is like, if we keep going and doing all this, all this stuff out here, out here, out here, and we're not taking care of what's going on in here, then we'll never meet the finish line on the stuff that we're trying to fix outside of ourselves. You know what I mean? And, and when we reach the finish line, we become a, a distorted role model for the ones we're really trying to influence. Right. You know, right. because to reach the finish line like this, finished. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> finished. Right. Come on now. Right. Come on. So, Powerful. Well, Thank you for that thought wave today. Yes, that's 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 a that's definitely a a, a, a levitation. You know what I mean? Like, what lessons can we learn from this moment? You know what I mean? Yeah, that's what. That's what that brother, you know, has went through all of this to teach us a very serious lesson, and it was not in the movie. It was right. not in the Wakanda or any of those other parts of, of his life. It was his real life story. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, yo, so uh, thoughts. Uh, any final thoughts? Uh uh, I, I wish I had, I don't have, um, you know, folks are not, I, I don't have the ability to see my, see folks posting questions. Um, but what I, what I do want to just engage, at least, you know, if you have any final thoughts or, or, or remarks that you want to share to the people, advice, tips, insights, you know what I mean? Um, and I, and, and, and personally, I want to thank you for coming on and, and giving so much uh, insight and wisdom already. You know, but do you want to close it out with any final final thoughts or remarks? Well, let me tell you, uh, I, I I just want to take this opportunity to uh, because really there's no final thought from me. Right. I'm still I'm still living. I got a long more way to go before I reach to the final thing that I want to utter. That's it. But but you know, I I, I just want you to to hear from the voice of someone who lives close to me and the principles that what I share with for her to have this space to give her thoughts on where the gap may be if there's one in everything that I've said so far. Check, check, check. So I, you don't have to see her if she doesn't want to be seen, but if she wants to be seen, she's going to flick the camera and make you see her. Well, final thoughts to just leave with everybody isn't a lot of people have heard this saying you are what you eat but i want to leave with you from spending time with him and sharing space with him that it's not just you are what you eat but you eat what you are mm. okay so digest on that yes as your sister just mentioned just said yes you are what you eat but conversely, you eat what you are. Think on those words. Nice. Thank you, brother. I appreciate you. And, um, you know, we'll be in touch. We'll be doing more of these. I can't wait for the class, the online classes to jump off because I'm in there. I'm looking forward to it. And I uh, thank you for making Happily Natural Day number 18 historical, my brother, with the Unk cake. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Look at that. Okay. Per Ankh. Nice. Yes. Per Ankh. Per Ankh is the house of life. You know, and this is what it all represents. You know, it's all about life, real living life. And it just makes me so proud to be honored by you and all of our family to be able to share this cake 
with you. So you, you got the recipe so you could be out caking for the rest of your life. And, uh, <laughs> you know, so just take a, a virtual, you know, digest on this one and get into your kitchen and make it happen. But also look out for, you know, my teachings. Uh, a whole lot more is coming out now. So you haven't heard nothing yet. You haven't seen nothing yet. You have not tasted anything yet. Looking forward to your mouth around my table so I can wake up your taste buds, wake up that sleeping giant within you so that you yourself can reach in and create delightful ecstasy through, you know, that educated palate now that you're going to